Turkey rescuers say voices are still being heard under the rubble. Search and rescue effort continue in Karaman Maras, Turkey, on February 13, 2023. CNN rescue teams in southern Turkey say they are still hearing voices from under the rubble more than a week after a devastating 7.8 magnitude earthquake offering a glimmer of hope of finding more survivors. Live images broadcast on CNN affiliated CNN Turk Truk show the rescuers working in two areas of Karaman Maras region where they are trying to save three sisters believed to be buried under the debris. In the same region, rescuers pulled an 18-year-old boy and a man alive from the rubble on Tuesday, a day after they saved a 10-year-old girl believed to have been buried for around 185 hours. Eight days after the tremor and each violent aftershocks, more than 36,000 people have been confirmed dead and the survivor stories are becoming few and far beyond between. Earthquake victims injured in Karaman Maras arrive at Atatürk airport by military cargo plane of Turkish armed forces for further medical treatment in Istanbul, Turkey on February 14, 2023. On Monday, United Nations Ad Chief Martin Griffiths said during a visit to the northern Syrian city of Aleppo that the rescue phase of the response was coming to a close, and now humanitarian pays the urgency on providing shelter, psychosocial social care, food, schooling, and the sense of the future for these people. That's our obligation now, he said. After announcing an end to their search and rescue operation last week, the White Helmet Group officials, known as Syria Civil Defense, on Monday declared a seven-day mourning period in Rabel controlled areas in the north of the country, displaced the people from the earthquake in shelters and temporary camps on the outskirts of Genderes, Genderes, northwest of Syria, on February 13, 2023. International aid has been slow to arrive in rebel held parts of Syria, complicated by years of conflict and the already existing humanitarian crisis that has led to extra difficulties for survivors who lack food, shelter, and medicine, medicine as they face freezing conditions. On Monday, the UN said it welcomed the Syrian President Bashar al-Assad's decision to open two more border crossings between Turkey and Syria to allow aid into the north of the country. Meanwhile, the Turkish Vice President Duat Oktay on Tuesday denied the report of food and aid shortages. There were no pro problems with feeding the public, and millions of blankets are being sent to all areas, he said on live television. Turkey's foreign ministry said more than 9,200 foreign personnel are taking part in the country's search and rescue operations, while 100 countries have offered help so far. CNN's Hannah Rich contributed to this report.